Today is slated for the Dominion Partners Quarterly Seminar. And as I indicated last Sunday, we'll continue with part two of our teachings titled, Get Ready to Laugh at the Looming Global Famine. The subtitle for today's message is, Walking in the Fullness of a God-Given Inheritance. Walking in the fullness of a God-given inheritance. I remember the rich young ruler who ran to Jesus and said, What must I do that I may inherit the kingdom of God? If he was wise, you should have known that if you are inheriting something, there's nothing you do for it. Someone just had mercy upon you or was kind to you and he left something for you. Many believers are now walking in the fullness of their God-given inheritance. And for such, they will lament in times of famine. I'm going to share with you why they are now walking and the fullness of their God-given inheritance this morning. And by God's grace, we will deal with legacy wealth and blessings in the nearest future. I hope the director of Dominion Partners pardon me for allowing them to advertise that and then change the topic mystery. The wind blows where it leaves. No man knows where it's coming, no man knows where it's going. That's the nature of those who are born of the Spirit. Tell your neighbor you're too predictable. The devil can sit and know what you will do next and will try to prevent. But when you move like the wind, you're unpredictable. That does not mean you're not reliable. It means the enemy cannot figure you out. Can I hear amen? amen. I'm of the considered opinion that the current series should not be disjointed. And by its continuation will be laying a solid foundation for teachings on legacy wealth and blessings. If you can recall, we rounded off last Sunday with a third heaven elevation. The believers knew operational level where there is no level, no devil. The thrust of Paul's prayers that we examined for the church in Ephesus is such that we should all realize that we are seated in and with Christ in heavenly places far above principality and power and might and dominion and every name not only in this age but also in that which is to come. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 to 6. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, who has blessed us with some. I can't hear you. Are you blessed with every spiritual blessing? Who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing where? In the heavenly places in Christ. Your problem is not that you are not blessed. Your problem is that you do not know how to bring what is in the realm of the spirit into physical reality. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy. Do not rejoice over me, my enemy. If I fall, I will rise again. Because he chose me before the foundation of the earth to be holy. And I'm lining up with that day by day. You are lining up with that day by day. No matter what they see in you today. By the time you see him as he is, you will be like him. He will keep this hope in himself. Purifies himself even as he's pure. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. If you love a person, there will be very few rules between you and the person. When there are too many rules, there is no love. When there is love, there is negligible rules. In fact, there was a, 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 a,
Beni ya womini kishitie. Having predestined us by adoption. What's our predestiny? Adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself. According to the good pleasure of his will. To the praise of the glory of his grace. By which he made us accepted. Do you understand? Oh, this is too much grammar. Recently, Shagun Bakari, along with others, did what they call Word on Wednesday. It was sent to me by the Senate President. My son, who know, who hides all things from me. It was the Senate President who sent it to me. And I saw him. And I said, Kai. He said, if you are walking in the blessing of Abraham and of God, it should be clearly evident because if you are like your father, it should be clear. Then he brought his picture and my picture together. I said, the evidence is clear. Then he walked out of the place and entered, what do you call that type of car? SUV. Uh -huh. Because if it's not high, it's a car. He entered SUV and said, and by the way, hi. Amo le jobaba, kama bi nu ama o, olushe gu jobaba ekoju. Amo le jobaba, kama bi nu. That's not my focus. My focus is the truth he communicated through that. Then I told him, I said, Shegun, when he got home, I said, there's a problem between you and I. I know. After I've seen you with this little presentation, I know the trouble, the, the, the problem, the difference between you and I. Your father is richer than my father. That's the problem. That's the problem. I had no car to demonstrate anything. Oh, you bought me your chair, don't you want? Verse 11. Ephesians 1 verse 11. In him also we have obtained, now we are about to get it, wake up and smell the coffee. In him also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his own will. You cannot change his program for your life. You can't bring your agenda to him and ask him to rubber stamp it. Give me verse 15. So that you will walk in this and realize it, he now began to pray for them. That you have obtained an inheritance that is not manifesting in your life does not mean that inheritance is not real. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and your love for all the sins, underline faith, underline love, because I will come back and say, this church why he's praying for them is that they are not complete. All the virtues that you have that will cause them to excel and to access those inheritance in heavenly places, they don't have. Come as by Salai to me at the rare, to All the virgins were wise, they were virgins. Purity was not their problem, they were virgins. But some were wise. And some were foolish. And they were waiting for the bridegroom to return. They all carried lantern. But some had grace. Some did not have grace. They had extra oil. And when they heard that the bridegroom is coming, everybody trimmed his lantern or his oil lamp. And they discovered that their own the kerosene, whatever it is, <laughs> is little. So they turned to those who had extra oil. Uh, please, oh, the bridegroom is coming, you know. We are all virgins. Uh, 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 wow. So that we will not get into the place where it's not enough for you and for me. Lord, see between what you want to enter, you want to enter, you want to enter, you want to enter, you want to you want to enter, you want to if they say war is coming and you know you are lame, you know you can't walk fast, they say it's coming in three months, 
you start going towards the gate so that you can escape to your village before the war comes. Ogun awitele iparo of January 1 I told you pe e bi apa iyan ma de it will be everywhere I told you What are you doing to ensure that in the midst of famine you'll be laughing that you'll be among those who have a feast in the midst of a severe famine This is what this today Tomorrow, and whenever I minister this, all I want to teach you to get you ready. That you have obtained, 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 not you are about to receive an inheritance in heavenly places. How do you bring it down so that you can feed fat in the midst of famine? Eh, Pastor, or are you realistic? I want what I'm calling. Dollar to change you. Rate it to log on. Kilo come, you can rate it dollar. I'm spending naira here. When I get to where they're spending dollar, I will have dollar to spend. Why? I carry a frequency of grace that will cause whatever is in that land to respond to me positively. Did Jesus leave oil well for Peter, James, and John? Did he leave real estate for them? Did he leave gold mine and silver mine for them? Did he store money in Switzerland for them? And yet he gave them a global commission. And he said, you need only one thing, my name. You only use that name to pray. You do not know what it carries. Now he prayed for them at Ephesus. I'm going to take my time. Within the few minutes I have for you to understand that something is missing in your life. And if you don't deal with it, you continue to short circuit your destiny and you continue to rob yourself of the things you should enjoy. Am I talking down on you? I will never do that. I'm a shepherd. My heart is aching. I like to see you flourish. So I can boast in God. I say, that's my son. That's my daughter. When my father's house was turned into a museum, historical heritage museum, they named the street after me. I asked them to remove my name from the street. The owner of the house had told my mother, through this, my little child, the world will know I passed through here. Put his name there. And they put my name, my father's name on that street. That was not the name before. They changed it. Then my mother built a house and sent for the local government chairman to come and meet her too. I wasn't there. When they told the local government chairman that is Master Bakari's mother, ah! She went to my mama, one day, Nikki, one day, Ben, Nikki, Moshe, Kole, Konsa, Dubu, and Mufeke, Furu, come and see street here. Ah, or down on the shabby. Positive or wrong. When I got to her, I said, Mama, why will you do such a thing? And say, Baba, and Nikki, Konsa, Lufeke, Konsa, Lufeke, and And they had to put a name on that street. There's something about you. Like the young lady who sang today, the world is about to discover you. It's been building up, but the world is about to meet the real you. In the name of Jesus Christ. You have to say, I am he. Let's consider the prayer. Ephesians 1 15. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for the saints. Now, 1 Corinthians 13 13 says, There are by three things faith, hope, and love. The greatest of this is love. In this ministry, all you have is faith and love. There is no hope. Are you listening to me? 
You can read all the epistles that Paul wrote. This is my terrain. Some of them will have love. Some of them will have faith. A few of them will have hope. Only the church at Colos, the Colossian church, had the three. And you will see what it did to them and did for them. Let's pray this prayer together. You are going home fully loaded today. Yeah. Ephesians 1, 15. I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the Bible. It will give you revelation that you can preach like a house on fire. No, it will give you revelation in the knowledge of Christ, who he is, what he did for you, and why you do not need to labor like you are laboring, but to enter into rest. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Oh, no. Why is he praying this prayer? I'm coming to show you why he prayed this prayer. That you may know this is what they lack. What is the hope? That you may know they have faith, they have love, they do not have hope. Ah, when there is life, there is hope. When hope ends, suicide follows. That you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. This was the message I preached in 1988. When I finished, Olu said, I don't understand what you just taught. I said, you will understand. I'm speaking ahead because it will hit you when you get there. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? Look at the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. They sealed the tomb. the rolled stone there. They pulled soldiers there. Only one angel came down. The soldiers fled. The angel did not roll the stone away. He just sat on the stone that had been rolled. And then Jonathan Janjuru, along love, along love, be a gun. Only could he show you one. Go mash, go shine him one. He shot all the way back here, and that only come out of your jail. He said to Lua no Bacari, a jail jail. And that only come out of your jail. Pastor Bacari, my boy, you and you. Don't compromise, my boy, you and you. Don't compromise. I'm singing for myself. You don't have to dance. You can put your name there. God sent me here on a mission. I will reach my goal and I will fulfill my destiny and you will reach your goal and you will fulfill your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Don't let anyone cower you or put a ceiling on your head. Break every barrier. I was a casual staff. I've told you this story before. I will repeat it today. At p &T, in 1973, no, 1974, 1973, I retook my school out. I was a letter sorter. I did. The allowance was one naira eight kobo per day. I mean, per hour, sorry. One naira eight kobo per hour, and we would do eight hours. You could not sit down until you have sorted two letters, two bags. You will face the ra, shokoto, or your Igbe, you have mastered the thing. I ex you just read the last line. You know, you will say, Abel Kuta, Augustate. We have seen Abel, Abel Kuta. That's the way the letters were sorted in those days. Now, now that you have email, you have WhatsApp, and nobody uses post office anymore. Hardly. This morning, that particular day, I'd sorted two bags. The rule was, you could not sit down until you have sorted two bags. I sorted two bags, my dear. I was on the third bag. My supervisor, Mr. Egu Jobi, 
was coming from behind me. He saw me sitting down from the back. Bah! I said, sir, why did you slap me? He said, you know the rule. You are not supposed to sit down until you have sorted two bags. I said, sir, I'm on my third bag. He said, it's your fault. You should have put the bags on the table. Then I will see two bags. Now that you didn't put it, it's your fault. And he turned back without saying sorry. <laughs> I left the letter. I left the bag. I went outside. You know p and is at the back of daily times in those days. I washed my hands. There was a heap of sand there. I dipped it inside the sand so that it would have some paper effect. I entered the hall. It was facing that area I was coming from behind. With all the stamina I had, It fell, I jumped on him. Well, they terminated my appointment. <laughs> they fired me that day. I didn't even wait. Neither did I go to tell the person who got me the job. I just went back home. But one of those working with me happened to be the son of the postmaster general. The first man whose initial was WWW before internet came. William Wilberforce Willoughby, Papa, or Oreo. He went to tell his father at home what happened. And the father said he should reach me to come and see him. I walked there, fuming inside of me because pata pata la foju, kura kura la dete. I fought for told you. Am I there, me? I entered his office, and Mr. Egunjobi was standing there. And Papa said, How dare you slap your officer? I said, Sir, how dare the officer slap me? He said, I'm better, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, apologize. To your officer, I said, for what, sir? He said, apologize. Can't I talk to you? I said, you can't, sir. So I will apologize. He asked me to apologize to you. <laughs> the man shook his head and turned to Mr. Egunjo. He said, apologize to him. He said, I'm sorry to have slapped you. Papa now said, apologize also. I said, you have done justice. I started crying. When I was sharing this story, I was crying yesterday. And I prostrated for him. And I thanked him for doing justice. I was about to go. He said, stop. He opened his drawer. He gave me a letter to go and start as a full-time staff. <laughs> Whatever you will not do. Nibba tu ba dulu, besi ko. Nibba tu tu wa nitalika. Koma nibbi raga niu. You can't slap me anyhow. Uh -huh. You understand me? Now, they've slapped me free before. I'm sure you know that too. You read it in my memoir. It was in London. It was tough. The daughter, Dr. Odutola, was there. Biola uh, or was also there doing guru. So, Omo Odutola and Faguru. The guy came to the place and said, You are delaying us. He's a rainbow, but I don't have papers. We open. <laughs> we open. <laughs> the number I'm using is, belongs to another name. The name I was bearing there was not my real name. If I would slap this person, that could be the end of my. <laughs> Nineteen eighty five. Long story, but I'll cut short, cut it short in righteousness. My employer and my clients lodged me at the same hotel, London Hilton. 
I placed order for room service before going to, to attend to my clients in the morning that day. The rule of that hotel in Park Lane is if the meal is not brought within 30 minutes, it's free. It was over 30 minutes, I called the person and said, I am sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir. It's, I'm short served today. I'm bringing it myself. <laughs> did I introduce him to you in Park Lane? Who did I introduce him to? Okay. Carried the food and knocked my door. I opened. He was like, John? I said, yes, you saw my name. I said, no, I didn't see your name. You slapped me here in 1980 in the basement with Mr. Gardner. I didn't forget the name. He said, oh, it turned red, it turned blue, it turned yellow. I said, not to worry, it's okay. I don't have to slap you. I took 10 pounds note and gave him a tip. He was double slap. <laughs> he got his own double slap because <laughs> You see this daily? This top man, this banker. Hmm? Where he was living when he arrived in Lagos, it's Kiri Kiri area. Kiri Kiri. His wife described it to me that anytime she would go to see, or he got a little man, right? Go to Debe. I want to learn it. We pay Kole Dan Koreshe, Shubaria, Nuregba, Olu. How did I get to where I am? I want to show you. Let's pray that prayer. Ephesians, let's continue with the prayer. Which he walked in Christ, the great walk which he walked in Christ. When he raised him from the dead and seated him where? At his right hand, where? In the heavenly places, huh? Far above. Satan can get there. Principality can get there. Uh uh. Bafu alone, When our mothers will feed us and show to Jen, and the Moti Yoma, Moti Tokyo, as a only day. Because once you eat and you swallow, no fly can access that food anymore. So Christ ensured that your inheritance that you are obtaining, that your inheritance in heavenly places is seated with him far above all principality and power and might and dominion. And every name that is named not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet. If he put all things under his feet, he is the head, you are the body. He means it's under your feet. And gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. What is all in all? The earth, the heavenless, the third heaven. He went through from here. He went down to the grave. He went down to the abode of the dead. He took the key of hell from hell. He took the key of death from death. He came on the ground. He ascended, went through to the heavens where Satan cannot get to. And put your inheritance there. That one day your eyes will be opened. And you'll be able to access it. And you'll stop begging around. Acting like an orphan. When God is your father. So when he finished praying this prayer, you'll think he has finished. He jumped into chapter 2. To show you and I. When you psychedelic Christians, there's a bit of a desert. There's a bit of a consulate. 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 No. We are all dead in trespasses. Including the Pope. And the Archbishop. Chapter 2. And you say me. me. I can't hear you. 
mention your name. Whatever is afflicting you today will lose its grip on you. In the name of Jesus. And you he made a lie. I am alive. Do you know that lie? That was the line they took back to Jacob. I said, Joseph is alive. <laughs> Say to your neighbor, I am alive. I am alive. <laughs> and you he made alive who are dead in trespasses and sins <laughs> in which you once walked. Oh, Moboshe Lenny Boshe Morning, Rijaga Jaga, and Madaro. In which you once walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now walks in the sons of dis- disobedience. Okay? Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the laws of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others ask I did. Oh boy, when you are walking like that, Looking for every girl that will go. Huh? Oh boy. Huh? You are born in town. But to bash in God collect my daughter. She does to you. She does to you, are we join? <laughs> That's who you are. Like by that, you're lucky to do. Go go on, show your word. Journey to me, you're back. Take me, you're moot. Take me, you're back. Fine boy, no people. I hope you're hearing me. Okay. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. And raised us up together. And made us sit together. Where? In the heavenly places. In who? In Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he will open his showroom. That he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness to others in Christ Jesus. <laughs> For by grace you have been saved through faith and not, not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And why are we saved that way? Why are we seated with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus? For we are his workmanship. To display it. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. With God prepared beforehand that you walk in them. How can you do good works without having resources to do them? God is not Pharaoh that will ask you to bake bricks and not give you straw. So you have seen what they lacked. He was praying for them. That their eyes of understanding will be enlightened in Christ Jesus and the hope of their calling. It is the hope that was missing in their life. Let's go to Colossians. It is in the same strength that they prayed for the Colossians. Okay? You have the scripture, show it to me, Colossians 1, 3 to 6. Ready? We give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of your love for all the saints, (laughs) because of the hope which is laid out for you in heaven, of which you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. If you have hope in God, how can you be hopeless on earth? How can anybody say you are hopeless? When these three things that abide as virtues operate in your life, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of it is love. That's why the fruit of the Spirit is love. If you have faith, that's all you need to bring to the table. He who comes to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of those who diligently escape without faith. It is impossible to please God. When Peter was about to fail, Jesus said to him, Simon, Simon, the devil has desired 
to have you and to shift you. But I've prayed for you that your faith should not fail. That was what saved Peter. It would have ended like Judas Iscariot. I'm praying for you that your faith will not fail in this season. That the virtues of hope, the virtues of love, the virtues of faith will continue to operate in your life. Let me continue to read this. I'm going somewhere. Which has come to you as a a, uh, verse Let me finish the last verse there. I didn't finish it. Because of the hope which is laid out for you in heaven, of which you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. Now verse, thank you. Which has come to you as it has also in all the world and is bringing forth fruit. If those virtues are in you, what would they bring forth? Fruit. It's bringing forth fruit as it's also among you since the day you heard and knew the grace of God in truth. Colossians 1, the same one from verse 9. For this reason, there are so many scriptures in between that have jumped. For this reason, we also, since the day we had it, that this faith, love, and hope are in oppression in your life. Since the day we had it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has... Uh, giving thanks to the Father who has... This is not LLB. It's not BL. Okay? It's not uh, all the titles you are acquiring. Oh God, this is not uh, chemical engineering. I'm uh, Kini Yahuweka, University of Bimi. Kileka, Ibe Lechiri Rao. Onikulo, University of Leku. Olo, Olo. Yemi Lo Turiya, Lo Si Bimi. Omanoba. Given thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by Him all things were created that are where? In heaven and where? On earth. What? Visible and what? Invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him and none of them can walk against him. And he is before all things and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have. Now this is the trouble in the church. Pastors now have preeminence so they lock up the resources in themselves. Do you understand me? Like diatrophies. Is that diatrophies? That's what confused them in the note. Diatrophies love to have preeminence. Uh huh. Is he, he, getting his own power from cosmic power. And he ill treats the saint instead of lifting them up so that they can operate just like him. If that descended, ascended, gave gifts unto men. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for their work of ministry, till we all, all, the fivefold and those who are not folded, till we all come to the unity of faith and have the same stature, the stature of the Son of God. But those who love preeminence will treat you as subordinates. And you enjoy it. Daddy, and they will put hands on you. And the Lord bless you. Lord bless you. That's not their job. They are first cousins of the atrophies. Do you understand me? They get their power from cosmic energy to oppress the church, to subjugate you. Do you understand me? I'm not trying to talk ill of anyone. I just want to be plain with you. It's not wrong to say, oh, my father in the Lord. That's all about it. It does not, it's not your God. He can pray, he cannot answer. 
Are you still here with me? If Christ does not have a preeminence in a church, they cannot access the inheritance that is kept for them in heavenly places. The pastor will know how to access it. He will give them fish, but will not teach them how to fish. So they will continue to look unto him. Hey, that's not the way it works. When you empower the debtors, when you empower those who are distressed, when you empower those who are discontent, and they become mighty men, when others forsake you, they will not go. Do you notice why I was not troubled? When I saw empty chairs, I know partly the youth were in their hall. I know the children were. It didn't affect me, but it was affecting my friends. Eh, and when you other people come along, they departed from Jesus. It's offenses that cause people to leave. Something will offend them and they will go. He said, are you offended also? When many of his disciples departed from him and walked with him no more, he turned to the twelve. What are you waiting for? He said, unto whom shall we go? Why are you staying at home on Sunday? You will tell me. I'm microphone. What? See, if Christ does not have preeminence, you cannot access the inheritance of saints in the light. Now, why would Paul pray this prayer for the church, for the Colossian church, and the church at Ephesus? Why? Because he knew what happened to him. I wish I have all the time to show you. What happened to Paul? Do you know? Acts 9. Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus so that if he found any of the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Do I need to continue to read? As he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. His inheritance was about to be given to him. Mm. You understand me? His inheritance was about to be given to him. He was going to represent Jesus before kings, before priests, before eminent people, before the whole world. You understand? But what did that light do? Cause him to be blind. So you see these eyes. Only we will what on law. But you can't get it this way. You have to be elevated to the third heaven for the scale in your eyes to drop off so that you can see clearly the things that are given to you, that are freely given to you by God. When you end this story, you will see that as, uh, what's the name of that gentleman? Ananias of Damascus, as he got there, he said, brother, <laughs> what are you waiting for? Receive your sight. He was not the one that he was using before. He could now see what led him to this place, I will soon tell you. It was because these scales fell off his eyes that he knew how to pray the prayer that the spiritual eye of your understanding be enlightened that you may know. Do you get it? I can't give you what I don't have. If you go read that account in Acts 22-26, he said that now your eyes are open so that you can go open the eyes of others. Oh, Nikawa, where you? If your eyes are not open, you'll be going on. It's a circus show. You come to church, you pay your tithe, you give your offering, and yet you are not accessing the things that are freely given to you by God. Oh, legit dominion partner, director general, Kuma directing, or director, your year in Jesus' mighty Ibadonimo Sophon. Are you here? The scales fell off his eyes. He could then begin to pray for these people. Let me close. I will continue in future. If you are going to flourish, in the midst of famine. One thing you must get rid of in your life today. 
hate. Hate. The driving force of many of your lives is hatred. Why was Paul going about arresting people and putting them in prison? Because he thought Jesus was an imposter and he hated his imposition. Oh, you think Paul did not meet Jesus? If he didn't meet him, he would not write 2 Corinthians chapter 5. He said, we used to think of Christ as flesh. We no longer think of him that way. When Ananias of Damascus said, he has, the Lord has, you have seen the Lord, you have heard his voice, so that you will go to represent him. If you are not seeing, you are not hearing, how can you represent him? And the only place you can see clearly is the third heaven elevation. In first, second Corinthians chapter 12, that was where it was catapulted to. He said about 14 years ago, whether in the spirit or in the flesh, I cannot tell you. I know a man who was caught up into paradise, into third heaven, and he had things that cannot be expressed. Of that person, I will boast. What day was that? You have to go to Acts 14. The day he was stoned and left for the dead, his spirit man was taken into paradise. You are about to be taken. Amen. You will see clearly. Amen. You will hear audibly. You have the passion to pursue the things you have seen, the things you have heard. Please, for a moment, let me glory in the Lord. Let me glory in the Lord. Is that okay? If a man glory, he should do what? He should glory in the Lord. I stood before you, one man. The citadel is a faith project. It will start. It will not finish. And by the time it's dedicated, it will be dead free. Has it been finished now? Did COVID stop it? The circumstances stop it. Is anybody putting you under pressure? One man. Imagine God showing you the things that are assigned to you by God for you to do. There's no force of hell that can stop it. Amen. Principalities and power cannot stop it. Amen. But hatred can stop it. We'll read a few scriptures and I'll pray that the love of God the hope that we have in Christ and the faith of the Son of God will begin to walk in your life so as to connect you to these forces that others don't have. There are virtues that are great. The virtue of faith, the virtue of love, the virtue of hope. That you, well, <coughs> Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but the desire when it comes is a tree of life. Colossians 1.12 In the New Living Translation, Go back to that place in my note, Colossians 1.12. I want to read that to connect it. And giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. Don't go to the kingdom of darkness. If darkness promotes you, it will bring you down. If Satan gives you scholarship, you will do NYC. Under him, now your suffering commences. And giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. Give it to me in the Amplified Version. Oh, NIV, sorry. NIV. Always thanking the Father. He has enabled you to share the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. You will see how hate is connected to this. You have to live in the light to share in this inheritance. Give it to me in the Amplified Version. Thank you. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified and made us fit to share the portion which is the inheritance of the saints, God's holy people were in the light. Give it to me in the Passion Translation. Thank you, Passion your hearts can soar with joyful gratitude when you think of how God made you worthy to receive the glorious inheritance freely given to us by living in the light. Okay? The message translation puts it this way because it's long. It's 12 to 14. I will read the portion. The message translation. It says, Thanking the Father who makes us strong enough to take part in everything bright and beautiful that he has for us. 
And in verse 13 and 14, he gave us a beautiful summary of what happened to us. God rescued us. Are you ready? Say, I'm rescued. God rescued us from dead, from dead end alleys and dark dungeons. He set up in the kingdom of the son he loved so much. The son who got us out of the pit we were in, got rid of the sins we were doomed to keep repeating. What valley is this? What pit is this? It's a pit of hatred. You cannot hate an approaching light. Hatred is what is circuiting you. Unforgiveness is robbing you. Offense is killing you. Because there's no love in your heart, there's no hope in your heart, you do not have faith, you just hate. When you hate, you hate. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanses us from all sin. Verse 8 to 11. The moment you step out of light, you go into darkness. You cannot assess inheritance as it is in the light. Again, a new commandment I write to you. Within is true in him and in you because what? The darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. He who says is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. How can you be in darkness and access the inheritance of the saints in the light? He who loves his brother abides in the light and there's no cause for stumbling in him. He who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he's going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. It was blind hate that Paul had. I took him to Damascus until God knocked him down and removed the scale of hatred and the, and the leather poison of hatred from his heart. He was going nowhere. Hatred will just sack with you. You cannot assess your inheritance in the light if you are bound by the poison of hate. First John chapter 3, 14 to 15. We know that we have passed from death to life. Because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. It's eternal life that connects you to inheritance of the saints in the light. First John chapter 4, 11 to 12. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love has been perfected in us. Now verses 20 and 21. I will continue from here next week. 20 and 21. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. How many of us have failed in this area? There are people we can't stand. There are, we, can't st we just can't stand them. It's because of what they did. No, it's because you have allowed hatred to creep into your heart and it's just circuiting your access to that inheritance of the saints in the light. You have to stay in the light, walk in the light, walk in love, walk in light, and walk in wisdom to access them. Those are my operational principles. No matter what you do against me, I refuse to hate you. I refuse to drag me down to begin to hate you because it will show sack with me. I will continue to operate in the love of God no matter what others do. Why? I cannot go back to where I came from. I'm marching forward. I'm going for do your worst. It will not affect me. In fact, I forgive you in advance. 
Do you understand? I forgive you in advance before you do it. So that I will walk in light and remain in light. And I can download stuff in heaven. I will show you more of it next Sunday. How these things will come to you. Because when you are elevated into the third heaven, like Joseph, like Daniel, you have the wisdom of God to avert the disaster of a famine that will affect Egypt and the rest of the world. You'll be like Daniel. you bring on time word to the king that will cause the king to prostrate before you because you're operating at a higher frequency. To God, all things are possible. And to him who believes, nothing shall be impossible. Stand to your feet. Lord, we thank you today. Lord, I pray that no one will have this demon, this poison of hatred in them against their parents, against their siblings, against their brothers, against their spouses, against their children. Lord, children will not hate their parents. Parents will not hate their children. They will operate in love. They will operate in faith. They will operate in hope. They will hope against hope in the name of Jesus Christ. That inheritance of the saints and the light, we access it through the love of God. Anyone who is walking in love, is walking in light, is walking in wisdom, will lack no good thing. This is the commandment which we receive from the beginning. God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. Lord, I refuse to be in darkness. Open my eyes to these things that are freely given to me. Let me begin to access my inheritance the inheritance of the saints in the light. I thank you, Father. Lord, may scale of religion fall off today. In the name of Jesus Christ, may all those things that will short circuit your people be taken away from them so that they love freely. They have hope in you. Hope the fire makes the heart sick, but the desire when it comes is a tree of life. Let them become a tree of life to their neighbors, to their people, to their city, to their nation. Because it's the leaves of that tree that will bring healing to the nations of the earth. We thank you that you are planting us as oak of righteousness. The tree of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. That he may be glorified. Receive all the glory and praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah.